Greetings to all. I am career engineer Mujahid Sakar. Today, I will tell you three things to consider before preparing a resume. Before starting the video, you can support us for more videos by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. Before mentioning these three items, I would like to add a warning footnote. Friends, these three items will be valid for you if you fulfill certain criteria. In other words, these three items are not features that bring you work on their own. It will complement the elements that bring the job. If I had to make this sentence concrete, for example, let's say a company job posting requires five years of experience. If you don't have five years of experience, fulfilling these three items will not work because they aren't the priority of the company at the moment. If you have five years of experience, these three items will make it easier for you to gain an edge over other competitors. First of all, cover letter. The first required element is the motivation letter. The important thing in this article is that you should make your resume feel personalized. You need to show each company you apply to that you really want them. You must show that you know or, or you are related to the industry they are in. So, why should you do this? Because every company prioritizes people who fit in with their story. Every company in every industry. Likewise, all institutions and organizations. The opinion of the expert in human resources is the person who came hard should adapt to our culture and do his job as a part of the chain. Sometimes there might be there uh, there may be additional requests such as adding new layer to our system. But this can also happen after adapting to the current culture of the company. It may be difficult for you to learn the structure of the companies while preparing a job application but the websites of the companies often give us some ideas on this subject. Of course, I exclude SME companies that don't have many names on the internet. As a result, the information source about them in digital channels can be low. At that point, you can develop sector-based solutions. In other words, it's like writing a sector-specific motivation letter, not company-specific, and naming it separately for each company. Especially, friends who are actively looking for a job complain about this. Well, sir, I am signing applications to dozens of companies. Am I going to write a motivation letter for each of them separately? Actually, no. You won't write letters for each of them separately. But you will pretend to be. It's not a lie. It's the power to market your knowledge. At this point, you can define five or six different target groups according to the sector of the company and the size of the company. Dividing companies into three S corporates, SME and startups. When you distribute them in several sectors, you can you come across seven or eight different structures. In other words, you are expected to write seven or eight motivation letters, but you won't write them from the beginning. There will be a certain template. You will revise headlines such as the size of the company and the future of the industry. 
This will be completed in three or four hours if it takes a maximum of half an hour for each. I think for sure it's worth the time investment in yourself. Another advantage of such letters or motivation letters is that while preparing motivation letters, you will feel better about which sector and which size companies you are closer to. For example, when I got a job at an SME company after my graduation, uh, I made the right decision thanks to these motivation letters. Because while preparing letters for corporate companies and startups, I really realized that my own expectations and abilities are more inclined for idealistic SMEs. This allowed me to make the right decision at the beginning of my career. In fact, it's a good experience to write not only a motivation letter, but in general plans. This is not only for career management, but also for personal development. The other one, references. The second important point we want to mention is references. I think one of the one of the subjects that I value most in my life is networking. Not just in business life, just like the writing I just mentioned. This is a very valuable thing in both our business and personal lives. There is even a saying that I love very much about it. Network is your network. The words torpedo and network are often confused in this regard. And also, networking is one of the sources of lifelong success. For example, there are some companies that make most of their new hires through friends of existing staff. This is normal, I think. Because you trust those employees, you have a good bond with them. And therefore, you want to choose people you know can walk the same path. Having references that you trust in between will inevitably affect your decision making. So what action you can you take in this regard? What you have to do is use the references in between to your advantage. LinkedIn is one of the best channels for this. In fact, we covered this issue in our video called LinkedIn strategy in five steps. Yours. During the university student or recent graduate period, you need to add someone from almost every sector as a link. In this way, your chances of knowing one of those companies in your job applications increase greatly. Of course, this process doesn't proceed directly like this. People won't refer to you or even care. Most of the time, just because you added them as links years ago, you have to build that road first. So, how will you do this? For instance, send a message, email to those links you added on special days, birthdays, holidays, etc. Also, if they share a development on LinkedIn, don't miss your Congratulatory messages. When they get a promotion, start a side job, or share a good news about their private life. In this way, you will have established a dialogue with all of your contacts, albeit a basic level. You can use various tools for this. It may be good to automate this kind of work with Low fees. Of course, this strategy is only part of the reference building process. Content marketing is also important because you need to be able to 
establish small dialogues with some of these people. Think of it like a panel. You will have a hello hello level conversation with all your connections and you will establish a deeper connection with some of them. For this, it's important that you share content periodically. It would be better if it is related to your eye industry. Otherwise, there may be general personal development posts as well. As we continue to do this over time, you will have acquaintances working in hundreds of different companies. Thus, you will be able to benefit from them while applying to companies and they will pass on different job opportunities to you over time. Of course, you have to do the same for them. Our goal here is not to simply rank the references. For example, you wrote the general manager of the place where you did your internship for those references. What will work? Especially if the sector of the company you want to work with is not the same as the company you did your internship. This reference really doesn't matter. Your references there must be compatible with the company you want to work for. In terms of sectoral or title, that's why a personalized resume is important. You need to do this with an end-to-end -end approach when marketing your knowledge to the company you will apply for. Experiences, references, cards or certificates should all complement each other. You shouldn't use irrelevant references in sector A and use them in sector B because it won't contribute to you. If I were a human resources specialist, I would expect to you expect you to convince me about my industry. For this, it's also important that your references write you a few sentences. Where did you meet? meet? How does he evaluate you? What features to, do you bring to the fore? For this reason, it's necessary to see LinkedIn as a long-term investment. As you turn to the people you meet there into references over time. You will see that you know someone in almost every industry. Here, too, we often get a question like this. Then my previous references don't matter at all. The academics, the places I did my internship, the people I met in the social environment. There might be benefits, but I don't think that Including it in the CV will contribute much. I think I have a pragmatist point of view on this issue. So I am utilitarian. Those references have nothing to do with the business structure of the company you are applying for. Therefore, they are not the people who can refer you to that job. You are a hard worker in your classes. So the professor who took your class wrote you a reference letter. This is a very good situation, but having your professor write to you a reference letter doesn't provide you with knowledge about the industry you are applying for. Lastly, social media. Our third and last item is social media. As you know, competition, competition is much more in every file. There are probably dozens of or even hundreds of people applying for a job you applied for. Unfortunately, most of them are eliminated at the beginning. Especially large companies use algorithms in this regard. And if the algorithms cannot find the basic competences, they already throw away those resumes. Among the remaining resumes, the human resource officer applies some filters. HR officer or recruiter, this title may change depending on the structure of the company. For example, 
he or she looks at what you have done before. What kind of value proposition did you present for the companies you work for? In addition, social media is gaining importance. When I say social media, of course, I, do I don't mean that you have shared weird photos. What do you share about work? Do you offer a business value proposition on social media? I am thinking about this. I think you should have one or two social media channels to market your work while you are still in the student or recent graduate period. It doesn't matter which one. I think you should choose whichever you like to produce content more. In this channel, in these channels, only the work you do, your comments on the market, your determinations, etc. This channel will become your portfolio in the coming years. Behance is a good example of this portfolio. What is Behance? A catalog by used, a catalog used by people in departments such as architecture, graphic design, and environmental planning to showcase their projects. In this way, people can present their own showcases without trying to convince each company they go to and companies can have a foresight about that candidate. The plus of social media, according to Behance, discovery trading is or discovery commerce is more prominent in social media. In other words, people related to your market can see your content while browsing social media and can offer you a job spontaneously without the need for your job posting. This is our aim in the medium long term, to be able to market our work to companies. Because, my friends, the information itself isn't important anymore. Believe me, it's not important at all. It's been 14 minutes since we started this recording, and in that 15 minutes, 15 minutes, terabytes of data on each topic has been produced. What matters now is the power to market that information. So whatever your department is, focus on the ways you can market that knowledge as well as the knowledge. I think Twitter is one of the best channels in this regard, but depending on your request, it can be Instagram or TikTok. I would like to give an example to explain this subject a little more. Take, for example, a typical job interview. A typical job, inter job interview. And it takes between 20 or 30 minutes and the questions to be asked are clear. Why did you leave your last job? Where do you see yourself in five years. Talk about yourself, blah, blah, blah. However, social media is unlimited. People who are curious about you can best review you and follow your opinions. When you try to express yourself in a short time, you will always be incomplete. Social media prevents this. The HR officer or company official who will hire you says, yes, this person really knows the industry. He or she or non-binary has a visionary approach and new ideas on this subject. Let's work with this person. At this point, I would like to expand on a part that I have briefly touched upon because it's very valuable for you. In fact, you may receive of offers from many places without your knowledge. Now, this is one of the new trends in the career world, my friends. Now, the officials of many companies do the hiring directly and don't write on career sites, etc. while doing this. It first started in the entertainment world and continues to find its way into more and more industries. 
Of course, that doesn't mean that the executives themselves about uh, have started recruiting. So there will be no need for career stylists. As, as I mentioned at the beginning, the cake is much bigger now and it's not possible for us to run this cake with the materials at hand. There are many more companies, many more job postings. This market just needs new materials. Career sites will continue to operate, maybe even grow. But on the other hand, new generation requirements will also take their share from this market. At this point, your task is using almost all channels on the road to success. Sometimes several of these parts can come together in the same journey. For example, when you go to the, a job interview, you can open a topic on your social media channels and increase your chances of getting that job. I say this because I have experienced something similar. The character at a job interview, I went to say that he was following the Career Hub Studio channel and was curious when he uh, saved it on his resume, my resume. We talked a lot from there. He said that he thought the page was actually a team effort. And he was surprised when I said, no, I'm on my own. Afterwards, there was no job for other reasons, but we had a good bond with that person. I think it was more productive than an average human resources officer interview. Of course, one last point needs to be emphasized again. These items should be your thoughts after meeting the minimum expectations at the company not before. For example, if the workplace is too far from you and you are sensitive to distance, the other three items don't matter. Experience or something else, it doesn't matter. Your priority should be the main needs of that job posting. This is what I am going to say in general. If you have questions, comments, thoughts, and or criticisms about the subject, you can send them in the comment section. If you think that you are fed by video, if this video has contributed something to you, you can support us or to our channel, uh, like uh, with subscribe. Moreover, if you have new topic suggestions, you can always send them as comments. Have a nice day. See you in the next videos.